next herb I'm going to discuss is echinacea, and I can't think of a better herb to take when there's grief, trauma, um, you know, and perhaps even on a, on a daily basis. Um, Kerry Bone is a wonderful herbalist in Australia, and he did probably most of the uh, important research on, on echinacea in recent times. Echinacea has been around a long time, but he's really brought it forward and really made us progress to understand it in today's world. So echinacea, and a lot of people have problems pronouncing it, so if you break it down to ek, in, acea, it, it's easier. Um, and there are two species, echinacea angustifolia and purpurea, that we mainly use, and I'll go into why and what they do in a, in a moment. Um, echinacea comes from the word echinop, or hedgehog, I think, in Greece, in Greek, because it has this hedgehoggy top. <laughs> And it's a composite flower, so these lovely, lovely purple, iconic. You see echinacea everywhere. It's, it's, a, it's a, such a brand plant, isn't it, now? It's in everybody's gardens. It's on packaging. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's really everywhere, and it's tremendous. And it's, it's, in Britain, it flowers in the summer, so I haven't got any today. But echinacea um, is wonderful because, as Lorna was saying, it's an immune modulator. Otherwise, with normal immune situations where you need a response team quite quickly, it uses resting monocytes and gets them motivated very quickly and going. I often liken it to um, there's a fire and the fire brigade are not at home in bed and they go sleepy-eyed, I think I better go to the fire, and they get there, and the house is burned down. They're at the station, they're down the pole, and they're in the engine, and they're at the fire literally in five minutes. Uh, so that, you know, that's that response team that the, the, the echinacea is all about, and that's largely due to something called the eichylamides. And you have the spelling in your notes, I won't even attempt that. But this is the main, this is the key biochemical constituent that has this response team effect and this modulating effect and it gives this metallic taste on the tongue actually as well you go through go through about five tastes with a really good strong echinacea and um, uh, this is what you want in your mouth all these flavors bursting through I generally use a one-to-one -one, the strongest I can find I generally use just roots because the largest amount of eichylamides are present in the roots. They are still present in the leaves and flowers, and you can use those. And, and certainly if you're cutting a root up, please use the rest of the plant as well. Um, you can make it into a tea. You can make it into a tincture. It would be much stronger as using it as a tincture or capsules. It would be, it would, yes. it would be nice as a tea, but if someone's actually quite unwell, yes. you're not going to get really... Yes. Yeah, and you'd have to use the root then. Uh, very much so. So That's if people are looking one. for it in, yes. uh, to buy it as a supplement, again, in a health food store, if it was just the, the flower and the, and the leaves and the stem, then it's not going to be very as good. strong. No, you we really want to go to back to the, the in root. It, in the majority of the product. Yes. Can you just explain... Um, just so people understand, is it something that you can use long term or short term? Or yes, exactly. So we, d I tend to, as a herbalist, use two species and um, long term, short term. Yes, I use two species because um, Angastifolia, which is one species, is the one that Kerry Bone highlighted for um, being the strongest in eichylamides, okay? But their action is quite short-lived, so it comes and it goes in the body. So if you took it in the morning, it, it's, you, its use in the body would be kind of paling a few hours later. So he said, if, if you put it with another one, so I make this mix myself, Echinacea purpurea, so this other species isn't as strong in the achylamides, but it lasts longer. So if you put the two together and take that when you're ill, you've got a longer lasting cover between doses. Um, and yes, you've got, it's rich in achylamides. Now he, he talks about prevention and taking it when you're aging, the immune system is aging. Um, so he says, you know, one mil a day if you're getting older, um, and then her, more hero what we call heroic doses, if you're actually sick uh, of a one-in-one one of this blend, yes. um, take five mils three times a day, five times a day, you know, while you're in the process of trying to motivate that immune system. But exactly. if you have a poor immune yeah. system... Um, and any kind of immune situation, so someone might have a cold, 
but actually they might have an upset stomach and they might yes. not know why they have an upset stomach and we have yeah. other herbs that would be almost more specific for yes. that but you would still use yes. things like echinacea yes. so it's got it's just almost like you don't really know need mm. to know what's wrong with someone mm. exactly yeah. just, take just take it exactly it. just take it okay and uh, so it's the alkylamides and it's the polysaccharides and I've described how to make that in the kitchen demo, how to make an echinacea tincture for yourself, for your use at home. So um, that's a good one for you to, you, you guys to go out and make. And you can also make topical ointments and uh, decoctions and teas. Mm -hmm.